all great feasts, St. Michael and all angels, St. Thomas the Apostle, St. Bartholomew the Apostle. Just missed it. <laughs> or the Feast of the Holy Cross, to name only a few of the more obvious examples. But then there are days like today, the lesser feasts, the commemorations, those days in the church's calendar that we keep in order to call to mind the profound discipleship of those who have walked this way before us in service to the Lord of the church. And on this particular day, one cannot help but call to mind St. Francis of Assisi. The principal reason we ordain on the feast of the church, however small or great the feast may be, is so that the person being ordained is anchored not only in the whole counsel of God, embraced in all those marvelous stories of scripture and tradition, but is, protect, is attached in a particular way to the stories of those who have lived and served and died in the church in faithful obedience to the call of God upon their lives. So today we keep the feast of Thomas Gallaudet and his companion in ministry, Henry Winter Simon. Two saints of God whose ministry in the Episcopal Church was devoted to including fully among us the physically deaf so that no one failed to hear the good news of Jesus. Thomas Gallaudet, known among us in our calendar as the Apostle to the Deaf, was the son of Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, for whom the great university is named. Thomas Sr.'s pioneering work for the deaf raised the awareness of the public about the physical malady of deafness and helped change society's understanding that the deaf are not retarded or demon-possessed as once thought, but are challenged in most cases only by their physical inability to hear. Thomas Sr. learned this most profoundly when he married his beloved Sophia, who was herself both deaf and mute. And Thomas Sr. quickly learned that in so many other ways, she was not the least bit limited, but was talented, was generous of heart, was quick of mind. Thomas Jr., the one that we remember today, grew up in a home where his mother was deaf and mute, and his father a tireless advocate for the education of those who are deaf or hearing challenged. So it's not surprising that upon his graduation from college, Thomas decided to make ministry to the deaf his life's work, his life's passion. But in his case, unlike his father who did it through education, Thomas Jr. decided to pursue his calling to serve the deaf as a priest of the Episcopal Church. His hearing father and his deaf and mute mother, and in like manner, hearing Thomas Jr. chose a life partner in Elizabeth, who was like his mother, also deaf and mute. Together they labored on behalf of the deaf within the Episcopal Church for more than 50 years. And one of the great gifts of Thomas Gallaudet's ministry was raising up among us a faithful minister for the ministry of word and sacrament. One Henry Winter Sile, the first deaf person to receive holy orders in the Episcopal Church. 
So then, from this day forward, the day of your ordination anniversary will always be attached to the lives of two extraordinary servant leaders whose passion was for those who cannot hear. Now, I do not think that necessarily calls you to a special ministry to those who are physically deaf. It might. One never knows in this business. <laughs> never say never. Yet I'm more inclined to believe that being ordained on this day might have some other connections for you. Thomas Gallaudet was laser focused on the ministry God called him to. He was clear about what God was asking him to do. And in a time when the distractions were many and the obstacles were great, Gallaudet might well have given up and found a thousand and one reasons not to pursue his vocation. And we remember him then largely because he stuck to it. Because he didn't give up and worked at what God called him to do until the very end of his life. Being ordained on the Feast of Thomas Gallaudet is also a good and holy reminder to you then that the work of a priest is to be strongly, powerfully sacramental. We capture the sacraments, those outward and visible signs of inward and spiritual graces, largely by means of our senses. It is in our touch, our taste, our smell, our hearing, and our seeing that we most clearly apprehend the mysteries of our redemption. It is through our senses that our awareness of God with us, our first-hand knowledge of Emmanuel, <clears throat> is most acute. The lives and ministries of Thomas Gallaudet and Henry Sile are faithful reminders of that concept you learned in sixth grade science about sen sensory deprivation and sensory compensation. They were clear that when a person's physical deafness, it, that a person's physical deaf deafness did not have to deprive them of hearing the gospel, but that in fact a person's deafness could well enhance their hearing through other senses. That is perhaps a clue to today's gospel. Notice then that in the healing of a deaf man, Jesus touched him and spoke to him. And it was only after the deaf man heard Jesus through spit and touch was he able to hear Jesus speak directly to him. So then, as important as words are to your priesthood, and they are very important indeed, I mean, clergy basically traffic in words. See, <laughs> they are likely to be many times and seasons as you move among us where you are going to need to help us hear what God would have us hear and you're going to have to do it without words. You are beginning your ministry, Ben, among the good and faithful souls of St. Francis and Megan, named for that reluctant saint who told a young friar to preach the gospel always and to use words when necessary. That's a clue, Ben. 
<laughs> I mean, it's amazing how this St. Francis and Thomas Gallaudet and your ordination is like all come together. I wish I could take credit for it. <laughs> It's a clue in because I believe it is a great gift to you being ordained a presbyter on the Feast of Gallaudet and Simon. Because there are countless souls you will encounter in your priesthood who have perfectly good ears but cannot hear. And I'm not just talking about Arthur. <laughs> will be able 